Welcome to a wonderful edition of Rebellion's Educational Series. I'm here with the brilliant J.D. Opdyke, who is going to tell us about a whole new manner in which we can work with the correlation matrix. Uh, J.D., thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, thanks for having me um, and for the generous introduction. It's a pleasure and a privilege uh, to be among such heavy hitters as, as, uh, as you've assembled on your show. So thanks for having me. Oh, no, no, my pleasure. You're uh, uh, talk at the Quantstrats conference uh, a few weeks ago on treating the correlation matrix in a new method uh, was extremely well, re well received. And I wanted to give you a platform to give our viewers a little background on that. Uh, much appreciated. Um, it's a uh, uh, it's a topic I I, I dove into uh, a, couple, a couple of years back, and there's even a motivational story for it. But um, uh, I guess just to give a very br uh, brief uh, intro, you know, generally this is about dependent structures, mm -hmm. uh, knowing how variables are are uh, oftentimes independent variables. Um, uh, but variables in general, even if you don't have a target variable on the regression, how variables are, are related and interrelated. Specifically about um, the, the measure, uh, the metric for this is Pearson's product moment correlation matrix. And specifically uh, making the ability to make robust inferences about estimated uh, Pearson's matrices and also to define scenarios probabilistically and rigorously. The, the, the main goal is to, um, uh, to treat Pearson's correlation matrix like any other parameter in risk and, and portfolio investment models uh, under general conditions. So not narrow mathematically convenient conditions, but under real world data conditions. That's that's the goal of the, of the work. Uh, wonderful, so uh, take us through it. All right. Um, uh, you know, I, I guess before I jump jump into the the motivational story, I'll I'll give some teasers um, uh, for your your viewing audience because there there are a few things that were uh, new to me as I as I took a deep dive in this. And this is you know full dis full disclaimer provisos. It, these are these are my opinions and my work alone. They don't reflect the the. Uh, uh, the, the views of any institution I, I've worked for or currently work for. Um, uh, but very briefly, um, there's some, you know, not a lot of statistics uh, have stood the test of time like, like Pearson's has uh, over uh, a century and a quarter. Um, but you don't last that long without uh, surviving some misuse and misunderstanding. And there are a few myths about Pearson's, um, which were which was news to me. Um, you know, very briefly, you know, the mantra of correlation is not causation. You know, certainly is true as it as it stands. Um, but I'll just leave as food for thought um, that uh, correlation is is not not causation. Uh, it's it can it can be, and I've seen it very effectively used within causal models and in conjunction with causal models. Um, but without digressing too much on that, the, the second thing, which is which was um, compelling and interesting to me, was that uh, it's it's you know widely understood to be only a, a, a linear monotonic uh, a, a measure of monotonic linear relationship. That that turns out not to be the case. A really great paper in one of the um, American Statistical Association journals. Um, uh, I, I believe the American statistician just last year uh, analytically derived uh, many cases in which Pearson's beats Kendall's and Spearman's um, when yeah, under monotonic nonlinear relationships and vice versa. Um, you know the the, uh, uh, the 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 result of the paper is basically that a, a lot of the widely held views that we have for these measures of linear so these measures of association are, are, are myths that haven't been rigorously put to the test. Um, and finally, that, um, and this betrays some of my own background, that it's irrelevant for measuring tail risk. There are many conditions under which it, it can be very relevant and effective for measuring, uh, measuring tail risk. So a lot of straw men associated uh, with Pearson's and um, uh, 
uh, important. This is all in, in, in my deck, by the way, uh, which you can download it at datamineit.com. I've got a spreadsheet there. I think the um, I gave a, a, a the quant strats deck is up there. I gave a lecture at Columbia. I think that's the most recent one. Um, so, you know, please feel free to download and, and provide feedback. But, you know, to get to the story and the motivation for this work, um, not that long ago, um, I was at a, a very large publicly traded firm, 50 billion a year, um, was in a, a meeting of the risk committee. I was the head of, of risk analytics uh, in the risk committee meeting. Um, uh, of which the CEO was was a member, uh, one of the most analytically inclined CEOs I've, I've, I've ever had the pleasure to work with. And the, the topic of, of discussion at that point was, was ELPS, extreme low frequency events. Um, and most of the discussion was focused on extreme value theory and you know, individual events about particular asset classes. Um, so people were wearing univariate hats. Um, and, uh, you know, when there was a, a, a pause in the discussion, I, I jumped in and said, well, you know, um, we live in a multivariate world uh, under times of market stress. You know, it's, the correlation breakdown has been very well documented. Um, and our dependent structure could change notably, if not dramatically, and this could have as much or more of an effect than any individual. Uh, What's the famous quote that in times of panic, all, all, all betas fall to one? Right? Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I like the one that says when things go bad, they all go bad together. <laughs> uh, and um, but you're right. I mean, the, the many, not all of them, but um, many correlations will converge to values of one, which means that they're going to move in tandem, which increases the risk of your portfolio, whether you're talking about investment portfolio, risk portfolio, you know, portfolio of losses, et cetera. Um, and uh, yeah, I, my, my point was, you know, therefore we re really need to understand, we have to have p-values for our entire correlation matrix that are consistent with the p-values for every correlation. We have to have confidence intervals for our correlation matrix, which are consistent with the confidence intervals for every correlation cell. And we also have to have a quantile function to do things like reverse stress testing. So if we have cumulative distribution function values, we need to be able to invert them to get the implied correlation matrix. You know, and, and you know, this was a very, they, the, the firm had a very sophisticated um, scenario scenarios and scenario analytics platform we have to be able to do all those things i just mentioned but for particular scenarios without making the correlation matrix uh inadmissible or not not positive definite and so you know i, I said all that but the, the non-analytically inclined were kind of looking at me but the, it, the ceo really didn't miss a beat and he thought for just a second, he said, well, how the hell do we do that? <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> fair question. And I started to answer and I caught myself because I, I, I knew the literature fairly well at, at that point. And, and the, the, the estimation literature, so the literature on estimating correlation matrices is very rich. Um, and there are some there's some really great papers. I think the state of the art are still uh, um, RIE as a rotationally invariant estimators. Um, Nonlinear shrinkage estimators took a hit recently. Uh, the the Leto and Pichet approach uh, they were shown to be non-optimal. Um, a really good paper in Finance Research Letters by Bongiorno and Chalet. Um, but but be that as it may. I mean, it, it's estimation is that it's it's a really rich literature, but what we needed and what we were talking about was inference, being able to get p values and confidence intervals and make inferences about our estimated correlation matrices. And also in his very simple question, you know, he he was asking uh, a lot of implied questions. He wasn't saying, you know, Get me the answer to that. Get me those p-values and confidence intervals when we assume we have a Wishart 
distributed correlation matrix, or we assume that our our marginal distributions are not heavy tailed or not serially correlated, or that we have a spiked covariance matrix. He was just saying, in reality, you know, in reality, where data is, you know, mar the marginal distributions in your portfolio, whether it's you know a portfolio of losses or investment portfolio, where they have varying varying degrees of serial correlation, varying degrees of asymmetry. Varying degrees of hail, uh, of, of tail heaviness, varying degrees of uh, non-stationarity, all the stuff that makes estimation challenging and inference challenging and hard, but is just real world. And so he, he, you know, he was all of that was implicit. He's basically like, okay, you know, go ahead and do do what you're proposing under real world condition. And I I realized at that point that the literature didn't have a lot to say to answer that question under general conditions if we didn't make narrow and mathematically convenient uh, assumptions. Um, and so I caught myself fortunately and, uh, and I said, I'll get back to you. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I, the, the deeper I dove, you know, the more that I saw was unanswered in the literature and that, that, you know, the real kicker was there, there are there are a, a small handful of papers that answer some of those questions. But none of them takes us the next step to scenarios that that restricts the correlation matrix so that only some of the correlation cells vary that are related to a particular scenario. But the but the, the others are held constant. That's that's the thing that there there is no method really to do that at the level of the correlation cell. Um, that 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 my research and my method allows us to do. Well, what about applying maybe a, a reinforcement learner to uh, decide uh, on the value ranks of your uh, various matrices? Value ranks based on based on a particular score. based on your current market conditions. Based on current market conditions, how much to weight each uh, you know uh, matrices? I mean, you know, given given you know. You know, rates are rising versus the time when rates aren't rising. Of course, uh, you know you'll have a much different um, yeah you know, the matrix that will be relevant towards uh, staying you know alpha generating will be different obviously than it was just you know a year ago. Yeah, um, exactly. And what um, what my what what my approach allows us to do. Is to is to define that probabilistically. So, given the world as as it is today, uh, you know what are the ninety nine percent confidence intervals around the matrix. So, what are the two matrices that encapsulate not, you know ninety nine percent of the random variation that you would see? So we can tell whether something is outlined or whether it's not with, with probabilistically. Are you a fan uh, of Ju Professor Judea Pearl's work at all? Uh, uh, certainly. I mean, I, I, my point about causality earlier, I think holds, um, and I, I think, I think people jump the gun on the whole correlation versus causation, uh, frame where, you know, yeah, pl yeah please, please opine on that. Well, it, it's like I said earlier, and I, I, I don't want to digress too much, but, you know, Oh, and and by, by the way, for our viewers, Professor Judea Pearl is one of the greatest uh, AI minds of the last 40 years. And on a sad note, he's also the father of slain uh, journalist Daniel Pearl. That I did not know. Um, but he uh, he certainly uh, his, his his work is certainly work that I I followed um, and I think is not inconsistent with the approach of again correlation uh being not not causation uh, um the the uh some of our colleagues at the, at the quant strats recently uh one of whom is 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 deep into causal models um uh thought there was a a uh, real kismet between our two approaches because the you know again the correlation matrix has been around over you know, over a century. <laughs> and to this day, under the conditions I described, 
Um, there certainly isn't an, uh, you know, under general conditions, there certainly isn't an analytic solution to its distribution. But I do have a non-parametrically defined distribution to its distribution, uh, non-parametrically defined solution to its distribution. Uh, I do also provide an analytic solution to its distribution under narrow conditions. So the Gaussian identity matrix, mm -hmm. that's, that's part of my work as well. But it, again, my, my goal, and that I, you know, I solved that as a, uh, in, in, uh, along my journey to solving the general, the general case, but using, you know, before we jump to causality, I would argue, we need to be able to make inferences about measures of association even. Um, and again, that hasn't been done yet in a fully flexible way um, uh, in the extant literature up, you know, up to this, uh, up to my method. Not, and I call it, and this is not a plug for a TV station, but NABC is the acronym, non-parametric angles-based correlation method. Um, and fortunately it's, it's scalable, it's straightforward, um, and it's, it's, based on uh, a very well established literature that uh, of geometric interpretation of the correlation um, cell and matrix uh, as opposed to eigen decompositions and spectral uh, distributions which are um, uh, non-robust under many conditions. I have uh, about five students working on uh, building a portfolio optimizer for uh, as a graduate school project. So uh, we'll definitely take a look at uh, your work and I'm excited. I, um, I'm i also, we're gonna you know, post some links so that our viewers can uh, see your work as well. Um, it, it's really very exciting stuff uh, you're doing, JD. And um, I hope uh, uh, you're joining us at the Cornell Conference in the fall, right? Um, I, I certainly hope to and, and would welcome Wonderful. any additional. I think you've sent me some information about it as yes, well. It, it'll be in September, uh, I believe. Uh, I don't remember the day. I think it's September 22nd, that Friday at uh, Cornell Tech uh, in New York City. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. Last year was capacity crowd and just, just a really great kind of quant event. Um, great place to run into friends from 10, 20, 30 years ago. So, uh, and a great place to learn as well. But um, and it was, this is very cool, JD. And we're gonna we're gonna do more coverage of your work uh, as well in the future because uh, I think you've got an absolutely brilliant mind, and I really love your approach. So uh, thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, it it, it was my pleasure. Um, thanks very much again, and and we'll 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 talk about New York and Cornell. Uh, look forward to it. Look forward to hanging All with right. you in September. Great. Bye -bye. Thanks a lot, Alex.